Hi, my name is Patrick, and I'm going to show you how to put together a pedal board. I've assembled all the components that I need, so we're going to go over the things that you need to put together a basic pedal board, and then we'll go ahead and assemble it and see how it sounds. So I went ahead and got the components together that I want to have on the board, and so those are all the pedals that I want to have, my power supply, my input-output devices and the board itself which we're going to use this gator mini board and we're going to use some mini pedals to cram a, bu a bunch of different pedals and a bunch of different sounds onto a small compact easy to use board so the first thing we're going to do we're going to iron out what you want to have in your signal chain so i've decided what i want to have in my signal chain from the guitar side starting here I would like to have a tuner slash mute button right at the input. Next, I have an EQ, a switchable EQ. Next, we have our Klon clone drive pedal, and then a distortion pedal, and that's going to comprise my front end of the amplifier. So what's going to go into the front of the amp is these four pedals on my right side. Next, my input-output device, I'm going to use one of my favorite things, the Voodoo Lab Dingus. I'm going to use this to go from number one to uh, the Riot distortion pedal as the last part of my amp side input chain to number one, and then number one is going to go to the amp input. Now we're going to come out from the amp send in the effects loop to number two. And from number two, we're going to go to a back-end noise gate. We'll have a delay, a digital delay. And then we're going to have an ambient reverb, because we're making this to use with amps that have built-in reverb. So we're going to put an ambient reverb on here, just to have in addition to the amps reverb. Now the final portion of the chain, of our signal chain, I'm going to use this JHS pedals little black box. And this is a passive, unpowered, volume control. You can crank it down to bedroom volume, tweak it for recording, whatever you need to do. It's, it's a very useful tool to have. And now we're going to power all of this with our Voodoo Lab pedal power ISO. Earlier, before uh, getting all of these things together to build a board, we went ahead and mocked it up to make sure all of the components work, all of the cables work, and the design works and with a minimum amount of noise, and it does. It works good. Uh, one of the challenges that we're going to have is that we're using an ISO 5 power supply, which means we only have five outputs. One of them's an 18 volt output, and we're trying to power seven powered pedals. But we're going to accomplish that in uh, just a little bit different way than you'd normally power a one to one isolated supply. To prepare your pedals, you want to make sure that you don't have anything strange on here that's going to get in the way of Velcro or adhesing to the board. So, like on this Korg pedal we have a little rubber pad little rubber footies that are made for this to be on a bare floor not necessarily onto a board so we can go through and peel those things off so that we have just the pedal remaining okay so now there's no there's no protrusion here so we can have Velcro here, and it's not going to push it up off the board. We have the cables that we're going to use. Uh, we're going to use EBS Gold flat patch cables because they're flat and they're convenient, and I got a bulk deal on these. I got a whole bunch of them real cheap, so that's what we're going to use. Check all these pedals to make sure they don't have a protruding back. Now, you can clean this off with alcohol. There will be some sticky left sometimes on these. Um, I'll probably just leave that as is. Uh, so, see a nice blank back. Now, this had some st stuff on another piece of Velcro on here. This was on another board, so we peeled that off. And it's a nice blank. Uh, this sticker is okay. There's a sticker on here. That's okay. It's very flat, so that'll be okay.
Uh, same thing with the TC Electronics sticker, it's recessed. So that's okay, we'll leave that in place. So let me grab all the power cables that we're gonna need. Generally these come with, these generally come with the power supply, but because we're powering seven pedals, I had to take stock here of what we have and what the current requirements are, the current draw requirements, before deciding what power cables to use. So the current requirements will generally be listed on the sticker. So here we see it's nine volts, 100 milliamps. Same thing with this Hall of Fame pedal, nine volts, 100 milliamps. So sometimes it'll just say nine volts. Generally, as a general rule of thumb, this isn't always the case, but normally, so this doesn't list the power requirement. Uh, it says nine volts DC only. No, uh, no current requirement listed. No power and current requirement listed on the EQ or on the the tuner doesn't have a current requirement. These type of front end pedals, like a tuner, an EQ, a drive pedal, they usually only take about 50 milliamps. So they'll take the bare minimum of pretty much any guitar pedal board power supply. So we're going to use that to our advantage, and we're going to split the current off of some of these outputs and allow it to run two pedals. So we're gonna use a cable like this, that's like a current splitting cable. And we'll run it um, as an example. We're gonna do this in two ways. We saw that these two back end pedals take 100 milliamps each. So we're gonna run those. When you run this, it splits the pedals in parallel. So just to make sure we have enough power, we're gonna run one current splitting cable out of the 400 milliamp 9 volt output and we're going to run that to our 200 milliamp pedals and that's going to show that we have enough power to run these two and we'll make this look nicer on the board but this is just for an example to make sure we have all our power cables ready so we're going to take another set of cables so these are three individuals and our individuals we're just going to go ahead and run our gate and our other two unlisted guys because these very likely only take 50 or so milliamps okay so now what we have left is the tuner and the EQ pedal now these are generally very variable about the kind of power that you could put in. This can actually be powered off of watch batteries. I took these out earlier. Uh, so we can kind of run basically any available voltage and current that we want to into these. And you just, I mean, you don't want to go crazy. You don't want to run a full amp of current into either of these, but you should be okay to run it off the 18 volt output here. And we'll split that with another current splitting cable. So this is the current splitter and then two normal cables that kind of braid it up here. So we'll run that. And this is how our power run is going to look, except we're gonna make it look a lot nicer once it's on the board. So now that we've mocked up how our power is gonna run, I mentioned that I previously mocked up uh, the signal path run to make sure this all works through the amp that it's going into, but make sure that you do that. Make sure that you take and make all your connections and make sure that they work before you permanently assign this to a board because you don't want to have to go and start digging things off and pulling Velcro off and cutting zip ties and all those things to get to a pedal to pull off and to troubleshoot what part of the signal chain is, is not functioning. So go ahead and mock it up ahead of time so you know it's gonna work when you install everything. And what we're gonna do next is prep the board and put the Velcro in place to make all these pedals attached. In the meantime, uh, we're gonna put the power supply in place because it's gonna have to be mounted in a special way. So for this, I went ahead and cut some Velcro here. And you can see that I installed it there. And we've got an opening in the back here, which is where 
we want to have our mains connection, our three prong mains connection. So we're going to use the Velcro as a placeholder to hold this in place where the mains can connect. Make sure that this fits. Okay, so our mains will fit in there. And then we're going to go ahead and lock it down with a couple of heavy duty zip ties. And because of the length of these, we're going to do four of them and put two together. Nothing wrong with having zip ties on your rig. Keeping everything in place is more important than aesthetics. Okay. I think we are good to go. Let's take and give it kind of a stress test. And take our mains plug. Plug that in and out a couple of times. And just to be a hundred percent sure. We got our red light, we got power, good to go. Okay, so next we're gonna make our power runs. Wire management aside, we have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven power cables for seven pedals. So now we're going to go ahead and map out the Velcro and then add all of these pedals. So we'll do that next.
so we are build complete uh had to back out for a moment and cut away and redo the zip ties that are holding the power supply and the the dingus here on because they ended up having to be in the same spot and it blocked being able to put velcro underneath this or put it flush to the to the board but everything uh appears to be in order here all on pretty tight and we've done some cable management in the back to make sure none of the cables are hanging out below let's tuck that one in but yeah and they're below the baseline so that they won't hit the floor when you put this on the floor so i'm itching to go plug this in and see how it sounds let's go check that out so i've got the pedal board hooked up this is my clean tone and the way we've routed this is that the white cable is the input from the guitar the number one on the voodoo lab dingus is the pass-through cable that's going to run to the amp input. The blue cable is returning to number two, passing back through for our back end out of the amp send. And then finally, our volume here is our final piece of the back end. It's our final piece of the back end chain that plugs into the amp return. And so now we have every pedal here where we want it in our chain attached to a pedal board ready to go ready to unplug and throw in a, a gig bag and take to a gig or to a rehearsal so we saw that the volume pedal is working again there's the clean tone let's try our clone clone So that works. Uh, we can boost that a little farther by pushing the mids with this EQ pedal. That's why that's there. So those work. Um, the the tuner works. So let's try our distortion with our back end noise gate. You might be hearing a little of the amp reverb on there as well. Okay, and our delay and ambient re uh, ambient reverb. It's uh, angelic voices. That's the tone print that's on our Hall of Fame too here. So those work. So looks like we've successfully spec'd a board, mocked it up, built it, plugged it in in four cable method, tested it, all of the pedals work, all the tones work. Uh, this came out exactly as planned. 
Uh, that's great. That's great with any project to have happen. Uh, I think it sounds great. It sounds exactly like I wanted it to sound. Um, I wanted to have those nice ambience and a good solid distortion and everything that was right, right at my feet to use. And I'm very, very happy with this. And I hope you enjoyed this video. Uh, just for technical spec, if anyone was curious, using a Fender bass breaker amp on the low voicing uh, into a bass breaker 2x12 cabinet with Celestian G12s, uh, recorded with a Shure SM57 dynamic off axis and a Audio Technica AT2020 condenser mic on axis. That is all. Thank you for watching. And I hope you learned something and had a good time. I, I had a good time. I hope you had a good time. Thanks. Bye.